name is James Alk, and I'm struggling to become a free man, and this is part of my story. Hello? Hello, may I speak to James Ock, please? This is he. Mr. Ock, this is the general manager of City Thrift Store on Edgewood Avenue in Jacksonville, and I'm calling to tell you that we've had to decline your application for employment. What? I, I don't understand this. I mean, you, you just hired me. Well, we did accept your application, James, but we've done a criminal background check and found some things that uh, prevent us from hiring. Hold up. That was like 20 years ago. I can't believe that. On your application, it says 7 to 10, and 7 to 10 years ago, I have not been in any trouble in over almost 20 years. So, I mean, you need to change your application or something. I just can't believe this. It was very depressing. It was like, uh, you know, just the abandonment and uh, bewilderment and a lot of danger in there. Uh, the crimes that I committed versus the crimes that other people committed. I mean, they put me a couple of times with some, some serious criminals. I mean, in particular, there's this young person in there that he had killed somebody and he was laughing about it, you know, or he had cut this person up and he just thought it was the f funniest thing and uh, I just had to stay away from him, you know, I'm still having problems with it where I'm only going to get so far in life and that's not right or fair, I mean, if I wanted to be a lawyer or something like that, because I don't think that I'm really a stupid person at all, uh, in a lot of areas I'm pretty intelligent and um, I don't know, it's just like a lot of dreams won't won't happen because of uh, the way the system is and the way that I'm categorized and, and labeled and, and the problems and stipulations and stuff that I have with, with getting employment or anything like that um, because I'm put in a category you know and it's been very difficult it's very depressing and I think it would depress the Pope I mean <laughs> You know, if he was put in this situation, you know, and yeah, people have made mistakes, but why do they have to keep reliving their mistakes over and over and over again? I don't mind being the Rosa Parks of convicts. I don't have no problem. And, you know, I've talked to a bunch of people that are my friends, and since I've come out with my story about being a convict and not being able to get employment, a lot of other people say, I hope you go far with this. So, um, you know, it would help a lot of people. I think Jacksonville is creating a massive problem when a man come out of jail with a felony and he cannot work. Okay, the city is having a problem. They say with the homeless, but part of the problem is a problem that they are making. Okay, now they agree with the fact that these corporations need to hire people with records, but the city also has a hiring policy. Why don't they hire people with records? Man, they got road crews and all of this. Ain't nothing you can do wrong on a road crew. Seems every time I try to get a job and they pull up my record, you know, in cyberspace and I can't get a job because of that.
legislation needs to be passed on a national level that strictly prohibits in print and in cyberspace the wholesale dissemination of information concerning a person's criminal background if that person has satisfied the claims of justice for his or her transgressions. In other words, new criteria and bold new legal precedents must be written into state and federal law that would fully allow a person with a felony record to live a productive, responsible life in society without constantly being discriminated against economically and socially, especially since the advent of the Internet. A literal new form of perpetual slavery is affecting a growing segment of our society. Just in the state of Florida alone, 4,000 inmates are released from state and federal penitentiaries each month, released into a society where that person's options to build a new life are practically non-existent. This is, in my mind, a very real civil rights issue, which at this point no one seems to be addressing or doing anything about. The overwhelming majority of ex-offenders at this point are marked for life in much the same way that a slave in early colonial days, when trying to escape the tyranny of plantation life, when caught, was literally branded with a hot iron and a visible part of his body as a lifelong form of punishment and identification. One of the hardest things that I've had to deal with this year concerning the stigma that follows you after you get out of prison is I have a 10 year old son and in my 32nd year of being a free man out of prison this 10 year old son of mine was involved in the flag football program at the YMCA in St. Augustine, Florida. The one year that he didn't have a football coach I said, well, I'll, I'll do it. I wanted them to have a team. And a couple of the guys who were the, the other coaches were enthusiastic about it because I'd worked with their kids too, just as, you know, hanging out in the park. Well, it was met with open arms until the fact that they found out that 32 years ago, I got out of prison. Um, and even though it wasn't a murder or anything like that, I mean, or any kind of child involvement or sexual charges, they refused to let me coach the team because I was a convicted felon. Looking back in history, two men appeared that challenged the criminal justice system's methodologies. Judge David L. Bazelon, Chief Judge of the United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia from 1962 through 1978, took a unique and revolutionary stand on behalf of the incarcerated and those re-entering mainstream society. Bazelon said, the problem with the criminal justice system in the 60s was not with the so-called criminal population, but with society whose need to punish was a primitive urge that was highly irrational. He argued for a therapeutic approach to rehabilitation, stating that punishment itself was a dehumanizing process and social branding only promotes more crime. His influence was seen up to a quarter of a century later as Supreme Court justices began to concur that his ideas were in fact valid and good for society as a whole. Former Attorney General Ramsey Clark, who served under President John F. Kennedy and Lyndon Johnson, said this, Rehabilitation must be the goal of modern corrections. Every other consideration must be subordinated to it. To rehabilitate is to give health, freedom from drugs and alcohol, to provide education, vocational training, understanding, and the ability to contribute to society. Society, however, is in favor of harsh, ongoing punishment because we are angry, and this does not reduce crime. 
I'd like to see a show of hands. How many people have been incarcerated and been in prison and, and gone through the gamut of Florida? What well, Florida has to offer? The house arrest one, the house arrest two, the felony probation, the misdemeanor probation, work release, all that. Why is there more crime and stuff? Because people can't get jobs and stuff and they got a desperation. You know, they're going to go back to, to crime because they can't get a job. God has blessed me. All right. Um, the blessings I do have, I am grateful for. But there are things that I'm not allowed to do. I mean, I'm a homeowner, and I pay taxes on that home. I have a business. I pay taxes on that, uh, on my tags. I pay taxes on everything. But I'm not allowed to vote on the laws of that taxation. I've talked with uh, Bill Shepard personally. I've talked with the mayor's office personally. And there was one person, uh, Charlie Christie, seemed to be really excited about the movement that I wanted to start, but then he backed out at the last moment. Nobody wants to hear about it. They don't want to face the truth. The uh, liberals, they want to exonerate all these, these cons so that they get their vote. They don't give a crap one way or the other. They're not the ones that are out here living with these guys. You can't allow these people to just willy-nilly walk around and you know, be just free in society. We don't know when they're going to, like you said, like, we don't know when they're going to snap. If I'm at a restaurant and I know there's a bunch of cons working back there, I'm nervous. No, no, these guys don't belong. They need to go back. You know, they, they just don't have any uh, rights in our, in our society as it is today. And I just, I, I, again, there's no sympathy there for them. I have none whatsoever. And if it was up to me, they'd never get out. Once they're in, they're in. And that's where you want to be. Just get away from everybody that's, uh, what would I say, uh, civilized. There needs to be a system put in place. Um, the, the more time that you show that you're trying to uh, succeed and, and, and do the next best thing, I, I feel that uh, things should be forgiven. Things should be forgotten. If I'm doing the right things, I should be rewarded for that and not punished. And and I feel like I'm yoked with this uh, stigma that never leaves me. That people are only looking at me and seeing my past instead of what I am today. I'm only 34 years old. I have two boys in their uh, preteens. Um, in today's society, if I wanted to do better, if I want to become a doctor or a lawyer, uh, I can. And uh, I feel that I should have the same opportunities as everyone else. I got my last felony in 1997. I haven't been in trouble in 15 years. Mm -hmm. I get to make $300 a week as a grown man. It's hard for a grown man to live off $300 a week. A 40-year-old grown man qualified to do multiple jobs, make better money. I can't get past the criminal background. I would like to be a homeowner. I really would like to vote. I don't want to own a weapon. You know, I just want to be able to see what FICA is doing with my money. They take a lot of money out of my paycheck every week. And I don't get to participate in how it's spent. I don't receive any food stamps. I don't get no assistance from the government. And so I don't plan on retiring. I don't plan on having a 401k. I can't plan on that kind of stuff. I don't plan on having a vacation. 
To make it a fair game, well, legislation has to be changed. I filed for clemency in probably 2002. I got one letter back, since, well, maybe two letters back since then. I get discouraged and say, this is not worth it, I'm gonna give it up. I love politics, I wanna follow politics, participate in it. Politics makes sure they keep our hands tied. It's not fair. some years and I'm still getting judged. You see what I'm talking about ain't a gay thing, it ain't a straight thing, it ain't a black thing, it ain't a white thing. It's just straight up discrimination. The Lord's blessed me with uh, 18 years of sobriety. Amen. Amen. It's been an incredible journey that I've had the past 18 years. and help those that have paid for their crimes to discover dignity, economic opportunity, and maybe most of all, hope. Along my journey making this documentary, I've studied some civil rights and federal laws and stuff, and that I know by myself it's useless, but if I could have the help of people like me out there, I need your help. I can't do this alone. There were famous men in history, Frederick Douglass, Martin Luther King. They did not do it alone. They had help. And I think that this cause that I'm asking you all in a similar situation that I'm in, if we could pull together, and I want to hear from you, you know, contact me. I want to hear. I will answer the phone. You know, we're not alone. We can band together, and through banding together, might make a change to make you know, equality and fairness for everyone.
his time. 